10 ways that stop motion animation is different than CG animation. Number one, gravity. Forces of nature are pushing down on your puppet at every moment that you're doing an animation and they will try to push it over every chance they get. If you're holding a really dynamic pose, your ankle might give out, goes down. That foot is not gonna stay where you put it unless you screw it down to the earth. Uh, unlike CG, which the character is going to stay where you tell it to stay until you tell it to go somewhere else. Uh, you have to be supported at every turn throughout a stop motion animation or you will end up falling to the earth through gravity. Design limitations. This is a very real issue in stop motion. Unlike CG where I can stretch or scale or sculpt my character into positions that might be pushing their actual design, in stop motion, I'm unable to do that. And I really have to come up with clever solutions to get the kind of posing or acting that I want out of them. In Kubo, I ran into this situation with the sister where she has this huge hat that uh, the storyboard artists were drawing these really cool moments where she was up close and personal with Monkey. But when I got on set, I could get her nowhere near Monkey because her hat would create this giant space between the two of them. And Monkey, for instance, had these big dynamic awesome drawings of her with swords over her head slamming them down but her arms wouldn't get anywhere near reaching over the head of hers and i had to come up with some really unique ways to create that illusion uh of these big dynamic poses that were in the drawings of the storyboards uh because they couldn't happen in real life straight ahead animation this is very different than cg or 2d animation where you can Put a pose here and put a pose here, maybe a breakdown and then shuffle them all up and adjust with your timing and spacing. Uh, in stop motion, you start at frame one and you animate all the way till you get to the end of your animation. And it is a process that's happening one frame at a time and you're improv or your concepts are living and breathing through you as you get through the animation. So there's not a lot of opportunity to play around or uh, adjust or push poses or do these things. It all happens at the same time. Hair and clothing. This is also a responsibility of the character animator in stop motion. Unlike CG animation, which uh, on higher end productions, very often the hair or the clothing is a simulation. In stop motion, we are responsible for any environmental effect, be it wind, be it uh, the follow through of a ponytail or a hoodie, whatever it's going to be. Uh, that's up to us to track as well as our characters one frame at a time. Constant repairing. Most people don't realize this about stop motion because it looks so beautiful and you think, hey, I got a puppet. It's going to last forever. It's not like CG. Our puppets are constantly breaking down. Uh, and needing repairs. After every single shot, we send our puppets back to the doctor's office, which is going to tighten bolts and clean up dirt and repair silicone that's ripping or a chipped ear, whatever it's going to be. It's a constant state of, of breaking down. Uh, and sometimes it even breaks down in the middle of your shot. And hopefully that doesn't happen, but that's a very real part of stop motion. Timing and spacing clarity. You have to be way more uh, clear about what you're going to do going into a shot in stop motion because in CG, you can just fiddle around and push poses and keys and until you like how it looks and you can really experiment a lot. But since you only get one go at it and it's from start to finish in stop motion, going in with the plan is the best way to get what you want out of a shot. Camera coordination. This is a very big part of the animator's job, is coordinating with the camera person uh, through the blocking phase of setting your shot up. Um, you have to make sure your character is hitting the right mark, is in focus, is lit well at every stage of your shot. And uh, that's something that in CG, they deliver you a camera. It'll often change while you're animating, and then it'll change again after a shot's even been approved very often. This has to be worked out much earlier in the process. Multi-character scenes. 
this is very different in stop motion. They have to all be worked out together at the same time as you're animating from frame one to the end. Uh, in CG, often I can start one character and maybe block that entire character in and then bring out character two and then adjust. And maybe their interactions can, can adjust at that point. So you don't have to tackle it all at the same time like you do in stop motion. Uh, and good planning is a big part of making that work, but it's all at the same time in stop motion. Physical, emotional, and mental tolls. In stop motion, there is a price. It's an amazing, magical, magical medium, but it is hard on the body. Your back's gonna hurt. Your legs are gonna hurt. Your, your knees are gonna hurt. Everything about working in the real world and bending over these little creatures all day puts a, puts a working on your body parts. Uh, and every time I come back to CG after working a stop motion film, I'm always so amazed. I'm like, oh my God, my chair is so nice. This is so, so comfortable. Uh, but that's just one part of it. You also have the emotional toll of it feeling like a marathon because it's so high stakes stop motion, especially working in feature where you're really trying to do perfection and everyone's counting on you and you are getting through a shot and you get to the end. It feels like you just ran a marathon and they're like, awesome, it's approved. Go do the next one. And you're just like, wow, this can tax your brain and uh, be pretty exhausting uh, as opposed to CG where I can get notes and then I can go back and I can adjust it and it's no big deal. Or I can get a second opportunity to do this. I'm not quite as emotionally vulnerable as I am in stop motion. Thank you, my friend. Counter animating. CG people know a little bit about this because every once in a while you run into a situation where you have to counter animate to get out of a weird situation or to make something work. But in stop motion, pretty much every single frame is counter animation. If you move any part of a puppet, you're trying to stabilize the other part uh, so it doesn't mess up the arc that you're tracking as you're moving an arm through a, a motion. Uh, but you're constantly countering, trying to keep things in order. So it's, it's a wrestling match between you and this puppet and all the points that you're tracking as you're going through an animation. So that was 10 ways stop motion is very different than CG animation. And uh, I love being on real sets with practical real puppets and miniatures and lighting and cameras. Uh, it feels very old movie making uh, sensations run through me as I, as I work on a project like that. And CG, I really enjoy the process of refining my work and getting second chances and third chances and fifth chances and until I get it as good as I possibly can make it in the time frame uh, that I'm given. Um, both are very different, but both are very, very cool ways to make animation.